dollars. Big John looms like a scaffold above the condemned community of Blair, the latest on King Cole's death row. Hillbilly customs still survive in these hollows. But Blair seems more dead than alive. No longer will the high school prepare the next generation of residents. For Blair, it looks as if the journey is almost over. To this moribund place comes Larry Gibson, looking for recruits against mountaintop removal as the coal company buys up the town. All but 70 of Blair's 400 households have accepted coal company compensation and left. They sign a contract promising they'll never come back. If there's a front line in Blair between the hillbilly holdouts and King Cole, it's this house, the closest to the blasting operations. Retired truck driver Carlos Gore has embroiled the coal company in a series of lawsuits. Every day he gathers evidence, shooting video pictures of the vanishing mountain behind his back garden. August 11th, uh, 97, at about 8 o'clock in the morning, I woke up and we thought it was a hailstorm going. And uh, I was outside, and this was... was laying around 25 feet from her bedroom if somebody's going to get killed if one of these had fell out and hit you on the head it's going to ruin your whole day surely there are enough politicians in west virginia to help you out there are politicians and they're coal related coal funded and coal bought the, the power coal company runs west virginia they run the government and they're trying to run the people and the people is going to take the state back but down the road, it's the point of departure for yet another Blair family. Within 24 hours, there'll be no trace a house once stood here. At the heart of this controversy is reclamation, whether coal companies do enough to reassemble the landscape. A sure sign they're worried about adverse public opinion is the money they're spending on TV commercials glossing over environmental damage. West Virginia, a land of great natural beauty. These residents of Arch Coal Mines know that responsible mountaintop mining respects our mountain heritage, even while our state benefits from its rich coal reserves. This message is brought to you by the working men and women of Arch Coal. Coal boss David Todd insists only a tiny part of West Virginia is affected. My impression is that you guys are on the defensive. Why? There is absolutely no evidence that there is long-term adverse environmental impact once reclamation is complete. But something like what we're walking on now, there aren't any trees actually growing on this bit. Yes, but there, but there will be. Gradually over time, uh, this land will be forested uh, and will be indistinguishable from uh, prior to our mining here. It only modestly changes the landscape. Such assurances cut no ice with Larry Gibson patrolling the ramparts of his beleaguered family cemetery. These are jewels here, natural jewels. You don't destroy something that's pretty like this. What I do is try to protect the mountains and they're part of it. If I don't find a way to continue doing it, they'll go the way of the dinosaurs. It seems unequal, hillbilly versus King Cole. But Larry Gibson's defiance is emboldening a wider public to stand up to the coal barons after generations of knuckling under.
mountains in the world. But to coal companies, these ancient Appalachians are a barrier to progress. It's called mountain top removal. It's a particularly aggressive form of mining, but the concept is simple. In underground mining, you remove the mineral from the earth, and in mountaintop removal mining, you remove the earth from the mineral. The technique of repeatedly blasting and scouring the mountains was developed in West Virginia, and the coal industry here says it's the only economically viable future for coal. But for the people who live here, in the dead end valleys they call hollows, it could mean no future at all. The rest of America calls these people mockingly hillbilly. Now West Virginia's hillbillies are fighting back. It's time that we all stand up together for our people in southern West Virginia and for our mountains and say enough is enough from the coal companies. And I'll tell you what, our politicians are bought and sold. At first, this rally appears to be a simple conflict between miners and environmentalists. Why can't they restore the land? That creates jobs. Once the land was... If you come to West Virginia... Are you telling me you can't restore the land? I'm saying you can. You can well, you. why don't we spend our money doing it's, that? It's done every day. But what's extraordinary about the people opposing these miners is that almost all of them are from coal mining families. What we're protesting here today is about the, the way the coal's taken out and a method that's been used to destroy your own backyard where you have to live and work at, I don't think that's a justified thing. I look at being called a hillbilly as a prideful thing because I am. The only thing I ain't is stupid. Larry Gibson left school in the third grade but that hasn't stopped him confronting the most powerful industry in the state. They want to take all these mountains down through here. They can't do it with the people here. Life here has been one of submission to coal for 150 years, and the small state of West Virginia remains the second largest coal producer in America. Today, Larry is taking me to Cayford Mountain, where his coal mining family settled in the early part of last century. This has been here since about 1830. All that's left now is his family cemetery. It's an island in the middle of a mountaintop mine. The good Lord put these mountains here. Only the good Lord should have that right to take them. Larry's campaign against mining began too late to preserve his own mountain. He saved what he could, but he couldn't stop the mining on the land the company already owned. It's like this mountain right here, right in front of you, where a coal seam is, right there, where a truck is over there. Yeah. That mountain there used to be three times higher than what it is now. This is what the great United States of America is letting happen to their own people uh, and their own land. These are the natural jewels of West Virginia. Natural but jewels. Ben Green, who's been in this industry for over 30 years, says he can't understand what people are complaining about. If there's any uh, valid explanation, it's probably uh, maybe the size of some of the operations today. Uh, there's no doubt about the fact that they're larger, uh, maybe a little more massive, far more capital investment, but the technique of mountaintop removal uh, is uh, at least 30 years old. <laughs> The technique may not be new, but mountaintop removal on this scale has only been possible in the last decade. With the development of 20-storey high mountain-crushing machines called drag lines. But the increase in the practice in the 1990s is also due, incredibly, to improved environmental standards. When the United States passed its Clean Air Act eight years ago, Demand for West Virginia's clean-burning, low-sulfur coal soared. 
and the mountain tops were suddenly worth billions of dollars a year. No, it's not just a piece of land or, or just a graveyard. It's a, it's my heritage. If I sit real quiet, I can I can um, I can almost hear the people. Larry Gibson doesn't dispute the economic benefits of mining here, but he does question whether coal has had too much influence over the state's lawmakers. Mountain people never did get an equal education, and they can do this, and uh, and, uh, and 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 like uh, that's how they that's, that's how they get by with it. I, I think it would be unfair to uh, characterize the uh, the state's political system to be controlled by coal. Michael Miano protests but he's also one of the key targets of this criticism. You don't see a conflict of interest with a matter of months ago having been a coal executive and now heading up the Department of the Environment? I, I think that there was uh, the potential question that uh, people would have. They might say that, well, here comes another coal guy, and if he's a coal guy, he can't be a good guy. But I have attempted to uh, demonstrate through my actions and activities that I am here to enforce the law of the state and to protect the environment, uh, restore the environment, and do what is right for the citizens of the state of West Virginia. We're using for baking. What do you make uh, out of those? Black one and cake. City Weekly has lived in this hollow of pigeon roost all her life, and it's her version Black of paradise. Uh, we use it in peanut butter fudge candy. You don't want to touch them with your hands? No, you don't want to touch them with your hands. She met her husband here, she raised her children here, and she knows where to find the best apples and walnuts for Sunday dinner with her grandchildren. Okay, we'll bush them, we'll kill them, and we'll pour them. No, you're going to do the same thing again. Pick it up by the leg. I got this. But coal mining is encroaching on Sibby and James Weekly's way of life. Above them, a mountaintop mine blasts day and night. Hey, you guys come in get more steps, time to eat. Now that mine wants to extend its mining permit right into this hollow. It's offered to buy the weeklies out, but these mountain folk are proving hard to shift. Money can't buy my memories of my kids, such steps, my grandpa, my grandchildren. The footsteps that I've left in this hollow. Money can't buy that. Money can't buy it. Oh, it's, it's, hey. it's an argument that's been impossible to get around, no matter how high the offer has climbed. The only way they'll get me out of Pigeon Roost Hall and my wife is to shove us out with a bulldozer. Period. But even if they stay, the mine could still come to within 300 feet of the weekly's home. In order to show me just what that would do to his life here, James yeah. took me fishing in his hollow. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> really, oh. really that. That's it. Well, do you want to hold your fish? Did no. you cop? No. <laughs> huh? I'll look at him. Yep, <laughs> well, you're a big fish. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to fill in this valley we're standing in? Yes, ma'am if they get the 3,200 acre permit. This valley right here where we're standing will be filled in with these mountaintops from each side. To try to prevent this, the weeklies are taking up the fight on another, for them, unfamiliar front. Along with other locals, they're bringing a lawsuit to stop the state government from issuing the permit to extend the mine. As you can hear the creek run out here, ma'am, listen how beautiful it is. It's a suit James trustingly believes he will win if only he can make people understand how special his home is. If they issue his permit, we have no home. That's the reason I ask these people to reach really down into their hearts, put themselves in their position, see if they will want their home took from them the way the coal company wants them to take care of It's not fair. It's not fair. 
Poppy loves you. Come back to you, Poppy. Okay, give me a kiss, my sis. Poppy loves you. Love, Love you. Come back to see Papa. From this perspective, it looks like the mountain people are fighting a losing battle. It's early morning in Blair, the town closest to the Weekly's Hollow, and as families are getting ready for work, Looming over them is one of the new generation of monster machines mining closer and closer to their homes. Charles Bartram stands outside his home of 35 years, watching and waiting. All the big storms that come through that way, they've cut that mountain down till they hit right in here. And they just, they're, they're going on down with it. There's another same coal under where they're working there now. They'll take it all. And as he watches progress on the mountain, this 80-year-old ex-miner is also pondering an offer to sell his home to the mining company. They want to get rid of all of us. There's a big seam of coal down under here that they're going to get to. Seven-foot seam of coal down under here, and they want to get us out of here. Do you think they will? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they'll get everybody. They'll get them because they know there's no future for them here. Already there are signs of a community disintegrating. Homes are abandoned, one of the two schools has closed, business has slowed to a halt at the barber shop. And that's the one we can name, and we probably missed some of that. I don't Here the main activity is keeping tabs on the changes in the town. I got a list here, and we've been accounting how many families have moved out, and we we got about 136 that we can name that that they have bought out and they've gone. And I think there's less than, there's less than 80 families now. There's less than 70 here now, so we're going to disappear, we think. But there are West Virginians who see benefits in the changes brought by mining. This is reclaimed land, then. This is reclaimed land. This area was mined about eight years ago by Princess Beverly. And as you can see, the grasses are starting to come back. Through. The mining company operating above Blair refused to let us on site. This is what I wanted to see. This, this is not virgin areas that we're going to be mining. But Mike Snelling from this privately owned company did show us around and stressed that much of the land mined here has already been badly damaged by decades of underground mining. So what we do is we go into these areas. Yes, we do mountaintop mining, but we put them back. We, we supply jobs for the people, so we think we're doing a, a really an improvement to the environment. Mike says it's impossible to put the mountains back as steep as they were, but mining companies are not alone in seeing advantages in this. Just a reminder that this is the state's chief environmental defender. Now, you know, that, some would say the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. If, if I'm there with a side of a mountain as steep as a cow's face, the value, it would be low. But when you can flatten that uh, area so that you can build something on it, so that you can grow something on it, so that you can harvest from it, then the value increases uh, significantly. None of this has swayed Larry Gibson as he continues on his mission to rally the community, give mountain people support, and listen to their stories. Well, uh, I heard a blast, and uh, there was rocks are flying, and... I had my cat out here. And the community complaints have prompted the mining industry to concede there have been at least some grounds for concern. And I thought, well, Lord of mercy, and looked around, and there's on this hill here uh, rocks and stuff flying. Yes. Uh, you know, we've had fly rock incidents in which uh, a rock have uh, come off of a, a, a shot that's gone wrong. Uh, we've had uh, uh, water quality uh, dust uh, what I call the nuisance kinds of, of uh, activity that, uh, uh, of course, have uh, impacted people. But there are some consequences of mountaintop removal that can't be dismissed as mere nuisance issues. One of those, the creation of valley fills, is now not only a concern for the communities, but for the industry itself precisely because it's integral to the mining process. 
Once the coal is removed, this is where the top of the mountain ends up. The unwanted rock and rubble is dumped over the edge of the mountain into the valley below, filling in where streams once ran and often people once lived. Already, 469 miles of West Virginia's streams have been buried like this, and the state government has approved it without any scientific analysis of its long-term impact. The state, when they permit these sites, have only looked at one site at a time. They're not looking at the cumulative impacts. And um, the 469 miles of streams that are already buried, we don't know in the long run what kind of impact that's going to have. And answers are now being sought by the federal authorities. It's become so politically uncomfortable for the state governor that he set up a task force to examine the issue. But these people don't have confidence in the task force. How are current laws regarding blasting force? And Michael Miano seems to regard it as unnecessary. There is uh, plenty of history and background to suggest that there is no significant impact on the environment. Well, you're hardly going to know about any environmental problems if you haven't done any scientific study. Ah, and so then uh, we can uh, use that uh, argument and we can be back in a, a cave deciding whether we should uh, chip out a wheel or not. I'm here to tell you that if there was a significant concern with this type of mining, that it would not be allowed. But the federal environment agencies beg to differ, and they're now holding up state mining permits until they get some answers on the long-term impact of West Virginia's valley fills, a development that has the mining industry decidedly testy. It's getting real critical uh, as to whether they have to lay off miners. Uh, all of that has been brought about by the controversy, if you want to call it that, with the uh, people in the southern part of the state, particularly the community of Blair. James Weekly sits overlooking his hollow at Blair. I've been going back to that rock ever since I was a little boy. That makes me think of the good times. Now, it hurts to watch and see what is in there. He doesn't yet know if his home will be spared, but West Virginia's hillbillies can at least claim to have made the coal companies take notice. Does any of your, you or any of friends like realize health problems from coal dust or from the water itself? Or is that more long, long term? I'd, I'd say, yeah, I'd be more long term. I mean, Unless I know. Go ahead. Go ahead. Unless a person has already, you know, got breathing problems. If they've already got it, <coughs> this dust will affect them. It's aggravated, yeah. 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 Now, one thing I passed by um, Jim earlier was that some of some of our tactics in Arizona have been have been doing um, direct action, like physically stopping their operations and coordinating it with with uh, media, coordinating it with uh, you know a st strong message, but doing it in in a very peaceable way that they can't you know that they can't retaliate against you but simply go in there and I mean we've we've locked down the machinery before when they've torn up dug up ceremonial mm -hmm. and burial sites of the of the Indians and we're just like wait a minute sometimes you have to prevent a crime to create a crime to prevent a greater crime you know and would that be at all you know received in this area or the local resident residents would get the ramifications of it I mean, I don't know of any grave site that tore up. They've been close to, close to them, but I'd say the blacksmith probably turned over a few tombstones and stones. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I don't 
I was trying to think of ways that outsiders could help other than dealing with the politics. I believe that way be done except be political. Yeah. You know, they take all these trees down and we're gonna get more water regardless. That's what holds back the water is the is the trees and stuff. And if you ain't got nothing to hold it back uh, we're gonna get. Uh, if we get a heavy rain, this water hit it raises real quick. You know, it's not got no really a wide area to travel. Yeah. Do you have any opinions on the uh, corporate control? You know, globalization. And how the, these machineries now are operated by like one man and <laughs> uh, they, they took away a lot of jobs up <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's what that's what they're in for. You know, you pay one man instead of ten or twenty, you have more money in their pocket. Profit. They're not really worried about little people like us. When it comes right down to it, they don't care. I don't think. Do you know any people who have been, uh, who've already relocated out of this area? Mm -hmm. And if they're, uh, how they're doing? Hey, yeah. they're not satisfied. The big part of us is satisfied. Yeah. They would rather be back. They wish they had never sold out, really. They wish they'd have hung in. See why? There's a lot of, lot of them that uh, has said that. But that's the reason I said what I did. A few minutes ago, uh, I believe what's left in this community is we will hold together and get the support so we can win this battle. To help by the politicians lobbying us. Show, them, show, show these companies that they have come up against the hard, hard watch now. Well, that, that's <laughs> the statement he made. He's got the easy ones out. Now he's got to deal with the hard, the hard nosed ones. Right. And these hard nosed ones, if we can get the support behind us, I believe we can beat this battle. Well, to beat it. You know, these, these people moved down. They, they sold out for little and nothing, thinking it was big. They could get back, you know, what they left the kind of home they had or whatever. And they found out the biggest part of them went knee deep in debt. Yeah. And and I'm not gonna do that. Mm -hmm. Because I said we're too old to start all over right. again and have big debts over our heads. He's cool. not able to work and uh, you just can't do that. And they're not gonna get me out of here uh, and go in debt one penny. Because I'm not gonna do it. You can't pack up and leave and buy a home every day. Right. And I said, I guess we're here for the long haul, whatever it is. Well, <laughs> that's what I think. I said, you know, when it all first started, I was just, let's just go and get it over with. But he, he's more, uh -huh. you know, reasonable. And he, he don't jump to that. Well, that was me. Five years ago. I didn't care. But you know, it was scary though. Yeah. yeah. And, but now, huh, they're going to take a board of them. Just me out of that Because that's my home. <laughs> and I'm too old to change. I'm like Joe over there. Yeah. I'm too old to change my lifestyle living or give up my home. Well, I... I mean, know. we've been here all our lives, so why should we give it up to a coal company? That's the way I feel. Well, to me, if, if you do give it up, you should go in with more than what you're leaving because really you're forced out and you That's should true. be able to have better than what you've got when you leave it in my opinion <laughs> so yeah you know i said he's he's built and uh, built all oak cabinets throughout the house the bathroom the kitchen the living room <coughs> so i can't go somewhere and get that because you can't go buy something like he would make. 
keeps it. And he come here and says, I'll give you 65000 <laughs> I told Joe, I said, you tell him you better get somewhere. Because that just don't cut it. You can't buy a community either, you know, no. where you have friends and you feel comfortable. That's just it. I said, we know what's around us. We know who's who. Mm -hmm. When you move into a new community, you don't know being some apple butter. Oh. About anybody. <laughs> You don't know what your next door neighbor might be. That's right. We got good neighbors here. We've always had good neighbors. And that's something you can't buy. Is a good neighbor. Um, How has the community changed since people have I, I take it people have left and they're about to close the last school. There aren't as many general stores around. <laughs> There's nothing. No, no. Huh? Uh, here. You, used, community. you used to be able to go get a loaf of bread if you needed it, or milk. Mm -hmm. You've got to go all the way to Logan or Madison or yeah. down, down Closure mm -hmm. to get uh, a loaf of bread. So yeah. you buy and you put in the freezer and you keep it until the next time you have to go. And you better keep your gas in your tank, too. Yeah, really? <laughs> yeah. We used to have, let's see, two service stations in this community. We had one, two, three, four, four stores in this community. You go pick that about anything you wanted, you know. We've got that no more. During the last school. Just about to go. Well, this is probably the last year, I'd say. And they're, they're transporting the kids all the way to Chapmanville. And a lot of them have to get up at 4 and 5 o'clock in the morning just to catch a bus to go to school. They left the darker, usually. And it's dark when they get home here. No, in the wintertime. And the roads are terrible. I mean, to take a school bus over the way they take the kids. Yeah. One plan with this, to let y'all know, is to try to show it to communities that are considering where companies about to move in. To be like, you know, because the public relations firm of coal companies is pretty strong, and they'll simply they'll tell them, you know, all the apples and peaches of, of the deal, and they just got to hear the other side of it, mm -hmm. of course. Well, there's another side to it for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Any final words you can think of? Hang in there. Hang in there. <laughs> Hang. <Right. laughs> That's all you can do. Yeah. You just can't back up and leave. I see. Hold on to the land. They don't make it anymore. You got <laughs> it. That's exactly right. And we're getting too old to change our lifestyle. That's true. Boy, you said it. <laughs> <laughs>